Hello. Hey, Joanne. Hello, we're going live here. Just a minute. We okay. are just about ready to go live here. Mine says live. <laughs> All right. Then we are live together here. Yay! And welcome, welcome, hey. welcome. Hey, Beth. <laughs> Good to have you with me. I'm here at the store. Welcome, so, everybody. So otherwise, we have it to ourselves, though. This is great. This is great. So yeah. this welcome to another Let's Go live let's go so live show <laughs> where sewing enthusiasts gather to be inspired and learn more about their machine so tonight i am so happy to have my friend beth sweet from quilt and lace shop in, down in uh, melbourne florida and we are going to talk quilting sewing machine embroidery and whatever else comes up here tonight so Chime in, everybody. I'll be um, checking out the, the chat here as soon as I can find it. It always takes me a, a couple minutes to, to find the, the chat and get that up here. But um, we will do that. And uh, hopefully you can say hello to each other and start chatting with each other. And, um, and then we'll be able to, to find your questions and get, get going here. So get rolling. So I hope everybody's having a good, a good day today. If it's Monday where you are, happy Monday. <laughs> if it's already uh, another day or um, in a different time zone, um, thank you for coming. This is the monthly Let's Go Sew live show where I do my So Tell Me interview and bring a guest on who I know is going to uh, give great information to all of our, all of our wonderful sewing enthusiasts out there. So Beth Sweet, Hey, thank you for hey. having me. How exciting. Beth is my, uh, like I said, my, my friend in Florida. And Beth and I actually went cruising together along with 21 other ladies in 2019. Beth brought me onto the ship to teach a class and Beth was teaching. We had another teacher, uh, Ira. We had help with um, Alan. And like I said, we had 21 people there all sharing a great experience. And we cruised to three different places. We went to St. Martin's, we went to Puerto Rico, and we went to Labity Island. So Beth, you look like you're ready to go cruising again. Oh, yeah. Where are you? <laughs> in Florida. Uh, of course, the cruising is all uh, canceled for now, but I am ready when we get to go sailing again. And yes. this that you uh, instructed while we were on and you had the nice uh, pocket for putting your water water bottle in and I'm ready when you are absolutely that was a fun fun project that was we did some great yeah. great things it was um, great. I remember we we sewed for three solid days so while the ship was sailing we were stitching <laughs> we were having a good time together for sure yeah, that was really, really great. Do you have the other project that we made when um... I sure do? Let me. Oh, show I'd love that. to see that one too. Yeah, this one's great. I'll have to you stand. Can do that while I get chat rolling up here. That was a fun, fun project. And I'm seeing who we got here. We've got um, oh, June is here. Arnell, Robin, Sharon. Oh, we got lots of people joining. Welcome. Welcome everybody. So there it is. There is the great, great quilt that we made to commemorate our cruise on the um, Harmony of the Seas. Yes, and, and actually that's what the flags stand for. So the flags spell out Harmony. And I think we used every possible feature on the uh, Stellaires and the Dream Machines. We sure did. We sure did. Everybody had their own machine. Uh, everybody had their, you know, all their supplies were part, part of that. They didn't have to carry anything with them except for their sunglasses and <laughs> cruising gear. Yeah. And their yeah. swimming. 
There's a little quilt label. So it was great. 2019. I know it doesn't seem like that long ago. In some ways, time seems like it's frozen, but um, we still have more more to look forward to, don't we? We do. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm glad you I'm glad you had that. I remember that was we did a lot of uh, paper piecing. We did a lot of paper piecing. One of my favorites with that. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about about that very much for for a while. We were talking the other day, getting ready for the show and talking about different kinds of quilting styles and all the different things that you do. And, and ah, one of the fun things that you told me was that you're not a quilter. So we'll save that for a few minutes. I want everybody to hear the story behind that one, <laughs> but let's start out by, you know, I always love to ask, how did you start sewing? Like what got you into this whole world of sewing um, yourself? Do you want me to start with the part of when I was not a sewer, Joanne? Sure. Yeah. We all start there, don't we? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I remember uh, as a young kid, uh, I was 12 and uh, uh, we had home ec at that time. And my mom wanted me to learn how to sew also. So the very first project that I picked was probably not a very good first project. Uh, but it was when, um, I think they called them culottes, right? You know, the oh, kind yeah. of suit, you know, kind of a thing, all one piece and everything. I, I, I can almost feel that fabric uh, that I used. It was a maroon ribbed knit. So what an awful thing to use as my very first sewing project. Oh, and, my. Uh, my mom thought it would be so wonderful. And I fought her tooth and nail uh, to not do that. Oh my gosh. It was just uh, like, oh my gosh, this is not my thing. And, and that was your very first project. That was the was very, very first, first thing. That yeah, sounds what? pretty advanced. <laughs> so that did that make you want to sew more? <laughs> no, that, uh, so I didn't sew again until, um, I guess it was until I got pregnant. So it wasn't until uh, I was married and uh, I needed some maternity clothes. So I sewed maternity clothes and then I did drapes. And then after I had children, then I started sewing uh, stuffed toys and that type of thing. Um, so nothing to do with quilting at all. But uh, um, I did actually, now that I think about it, oh gosh, I had a old singer serger that about did me in. Uh, but I, uh, I did make a pink suit, <laughs> but everything was surged and completed and everything. Wow. Uh, and, then, and then I didn't sew for a good 20 years. So you already had a machine then in your house for uh, even yes, as a young well, married yeah. woman with a, yeah. Just okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's so amazing. Cause I bet a lot, I bet there's a lot of people um, here with us tonight. A lot of our friends that had a similar experience where maybe they learned when they were young and then they kind of just, you know, dropped it and then came back into it because they maybe had a, had their first child or, you know, had their first home, first place to decorate, whatever. So I'm sure that's common experience. I'd love to hear from, from in the chat, if that's, if that's yeah, where you, tell me if anybody where you were at. That road of uh, not liking to sew and then necessity makes you, makes you do it. I was the exact opposite, exact opposite. But, you know, I guess I was just really, really fortunate because once I started, I just literally never stopped. <laughs> but I think it's, I, I think in some ways, um, somebody like you maybe has a, a different kind of appreciation for it because you did learn as an, you know, as an adult. So as an adult, your, your choices are very much more particular and you have to really want to do it if you're deciding to do it as an adult. So Exactly. Exactly. I think you told me you had a little bit of help from your mother-in-law though, didn't you? Yeah. So uh, uh, when uh, I got married, uh, my mother-in-law, she was a big quilter. She also did smocking. She was a huge sewer. So uh, she had a serger. Uh, she loved that. And uh, she actually was a Bernina background. Uh, so I, I didn't even hunt for a different type of machine. She said Bernina. So I went out and got a Bernina. It was a huge improvement over the Singer <laughs> sewing machine. Uh, you know, I bet that's a common experience too, where people have had the experience of someone in their family or, you know, a teacher or whatever that used a certain particular machine. And then that's what they 
went for right away. Now, obviously, I, you know, I'm a brother ambassador, so I work exclusively yeah. with with brother machines now. But um, I hear that a lot where somebody, you know, say like, how did you end up with that machine? Well, that's what my aunt told me to get, or that's what my mom told me to get. It. Your, your mother-in-law told you to get that. So that's pretty yeah. common. Yes. Yes. So uh, she was a good support and uh, taught me uh, a lot. And uh, my sister-in-law also sewed. And so I guess it was kind of around that time that um, I got interested in quilting, but was uh, just way too, too busy with kids. So it was actually quite a while later before I started making non, um, um, what do I want to say, uh, more uh, artistic type of things instead of just useful things like uh, clothing and draperies and stuff. So, Well, that's a really good background to have, though, too, to have had experience with making garments before you make quilts because quilting is a whole different whole different ball game but just the principles of learning how to use the machine learning how to do basic straight sewing is is key it's critical to making a good quality a good quality quilt right exactly cool. and I do think um, quilting is a lot easier than garment sewing so I, I hear that a lot and I I loved, I loved, you know, I'm a, I'm an everything sewer. I mean, I do quilting, crafting, you know, garments, obviously, but garments are kind of my, my niche and machine embroidery. Yeah. And every time I hear a quilter say that, I say, well, you know, it, I think quilting is to, is so precise and it, it requires so much skill to put together all of those, those pieces that I think in some way, I think, I don't know if we could pick a level, but I think it's all, I think it's all it takes some really special dedication to, yeah, to do all one. of it. So one, definitely, definitely. Well, I know, you know, you've told me a little bit about your, your history and how you um, got into where you're at now, which is owner of Quilts and Lace Quilt Shop in Melbourne, Florida. And I think I remember you telling me that, you know, you started out, you had, a, you worked, you, you know, had, had some sales, um, sales jobs. And then, uh -huh. um, being a, a wife and a mom and a you yep. know homekeeper and and then uh, volunteering you said you did uh, substitute teaching I mean all of that to me just ties perfectly together for what you're doing now which is owning and operating a quilt store and teaching a lot of people uh, how to quilt when they come in they shop they take classes all those things so Tell us just a little bit more about uh, the shop itself. You know, how, how, uh, how long have you had it? And, you know, what was your experience like being a new quilt shop owner and, you know, kind of how you've, how you've grown over the years from being um, quilts and lace proprietor. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting to hear that. I always just uh, it, I find it amazing that I ended up here because certainly my background was so varied. I, went from uh, selling uh, switches and uh, volunteering at schools and teaching math and selling insurance and volunteering at schools and churches. And it really was quite the gambit. I used to teach chess also was something else that I did. And uh, so all of the little things I think just help come together. But what kind of triggered it all is I had a neighbor who had a quilt store and she needed some extra help. So I went in and helped her uh, for a while and it turned into a uh, part, more permanent part-time job. And I just loved uh, the customers. I think that's the first thing that drew me in. They're oh, quilters and piecers and all that are just wonderful, caring, giving people. So just an excellent group of people to uh, work with. And I just love that every day was a variety. So I was never doing the same thing. There was always uh, something new and different. And, uh, you know, I did teach for quite a while too. And I love that. That's probably my first love still is teaching. So uh, I loved that I could use that skill also. And so I worked for uh, that quilt store for a while. And then I went and worked for another quilt store that was uh, quite different from the, the first one that I worked at. Uh, I worked a little more full time there, uh, different uh, everything, just about different types of machines, different types of fabric. And so um, as I was working at these places, I, I started saying to myself, 
I wonder if I could do this. I think I would really enjoy doing it. So I wrote up a business plan and uh, said all my ideal things that I'd want as part of the business. And then um, one day I was at a quilt show and I was just going through all the vendors. And one of the vendors uh, was Quilts and Lace because the store uh, has been named that for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, I just bought, bought the name. And um, Alan and Ira, I met them and they were looking for a, uh, a plan B for their store because uh, they really pretty much operated it, just the two of them all by themselves. And they're like, you know, what if we get sick? What if we have to go somewhere? And um, so uh, I happened to come on the spot at the time they were thinking about changes. And so I said, well, oh my gosh, you know, I'm writing this business plan. I'm very interested. And so I started working for them on April 1st because they wanted to make sure that the customers liked me before Aww. they <laughs> wanted to, uh, to sell. That was a no brainer. That was a no brainer. <laughs> so uh, um, November 22nd of 2016 is when I purchased the store. But I do celebrate my anniversary on April 1st. So I celebrate the anniversary on April 1st because that's when I first started. And, you know, I keep looking for something really cute to play on. And, you know, that's no fooling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we celebrated recently together. I hope to celebrate that day. That was that was great. Well, I've, Alan and I are also great, great friends. And I knew them and then they yeah. introduced me to you. So, so well, having a quilt shop. You know, I wonder, I, we may even have some of our friends here who have had that as a dream, you know, who knows, but I'd like to, you know, kind of find out like, how do you, how do you put it all together? You know, one, one big thing is having um, staff there to work. And I know you have a great, great staff there. And I think you'd probably agree, you know, that can make or break any place. We probably all have experience where we've, We've gone into hopefully more, more good, you know, where we go into a store and you're, you're, you're always glad to see certain people there because you know, they're going to help you. And, you know, it becomes like, like a friendship for, yeah. for yeah. a lot. Yeah. We're going to talk about classes too, in a little bit. That's another area, you know, yeah. where friend friendships develop, but how, how did you, how'd you find staff? How'd you get, you know, how did you manage to put together that, that cohesive unit that makes makes um, quilts and lace uh, work so well? Well, you know, that's a, a, a great point uh, because <clears throat> um, I, you know, brought some skills into the, the mix, but I am, um, I guess I look at myself as a, a jack of all trades and maybe a master of none. So uh, when I was looking for staff, I was looking for those people that were detail oriented, people that I had encountered that were super friendly, helpful, patient, um, you know, that treated me like an individual and a person and, and not like just, you know, a number and, you know, hi, and then walk away kind of a thing. We um, just always want to uh, make people feel important. So uh, that's what I looked for in my employees. And then hard workers. Oh my gosh, I've got some very hardworking uh, women and, and, and man. And um, yeah. so it's huge to have a staff that, you know, pivots <laughs> frequently and, um, and then just pitch in and help with everything because they never know what they're going to do every day either. Well, I think the other, you know, really great thing in sewing is that we all have our own little special interests. And, and I have never, I've met many, 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 many sewing enthusiasts. I have never seen two people that said, they both like doing the exact same thing. You know, we're going to talk about some different types of sewing and, and that tonight, but I'm um, sure within your staff, you probably have that too, where certain yeah, people, maybe exactly. somebody, somebody excels in paper piecing. That might be yeah. you, you, but you, I got a feeling you excel in, in almost everything I'm going to list, but you know, other people, maybe when it comes to quilting, they're, they're able to do free motion quilting. Um, some people are, are like to do, uh, piecing. Some people like to do machine embroidered quilts. I'd love to see some of our, our friends here tell us a little bit about what kind of sewing they yeah. like to do. And if it's yeah. quilting, 
in particular, we've already got quite a few people there talking about um, when and how they learned to sew and oh, some of their first projects. So there's some, some fun, some fun the, chat going on. I don't have the chat on my end, so I'll, I'll look at yeah, it. Yeah, you probably, you'll be able to, you'll be able to read it all. Yeah. You'll be able to read it all later, but so, but you know. Definitely. And I, I always think too, when you go to different quilt stores, not a single one ever looks the same, do they? No, no. That's why they have quilt shop hops, right? So, so you can visit all of them and get a, and get, you know, a little taste of this, that, and the other. Yeah. Well, well, I'm sure. Anne working in the background right here. So Anne is that organizer, uh, you know, keeping everybody on task kind of a thing. So she's really good at um, making sure that everything's all lined up for the next day. And of course, uh, she knows her sewing. So she's a very good quilter and knows a lot of people and just goes that extra mile to help people out. So uh, that's, uh, you know, one of the many strengths that she has. Uh, Lori, who works here, oh my gosh, she can put a little, uh, uh, give her one piece of fabric and she'll find everything that will go with it. So she's very good at selecting. And Betsy, um, she's our one that just is our, um, uh, what's that called when they make little vignettes and when they do little settings and everything. Oh, kind of the arranger, the decorator, yeah, the yeah. magic maker there. Merchandiser, yes, <laughs> Merchandiser yes. yeah. <laughs> Well, so excellent that and Cherry, uh, Cherry happened to work today and she's our Kimberbell queen. So she uh, embroiders everything, makes all my samples, prepares things for me. So we always say when we do our Facebook live that it's a uh, community project because uh, uh, it's usually cut and uh, ironed and everything by somebody and put to, and Lori picks the colors and, and everything. And Cherry actually is a, um, she has many accolades. Uh, she uh, is an award-winning um, Hoffman and uh, Free Spirit uh, quilt contender. Wow. So, uh, you got some... Mr. Hoffman himself actually purchased one of the quilts that she did. Whoa. Uh, it was Hawaiian shirts, which I guess she, he has an affinity for that. So um, that's amazing. But, well, and, and there again, it makes me think of just how important a good quality shop is where, where you can go, you know, your own hometown, hometown shop, yeah. um, preferably where you can go and you can ask questions and, and find out from, from experts and, if, uh, and just know. get encouragement, right? I'm sure that's yeah, another that's, big, that's huge, big part of what you see. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if they go to our website, Ira has done uh, many of our uh, videos uh, for us for online classes, uh, Maryland too. So we got a few instructors that do our online classes. And then uh, uh, we have, of course, a great service department. So I've got uh, two uh, women and also Alan. So I've got uh, Marlene, Chris, and then Alan, who are... Uh, 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 handling all our service uh, that we need. So that department's been pretty busy, especially uh, last year with COVID. Everybody was bringing their old sewing machines out of the closet. And, oh, yeah. Uh, they yep. weren't working when they brought them out. So we had my to my own dealer here locally at one time, he had 90 machines in there for repair. All, all at one time. time. So, you know, everybody's sewing today. That's that's a good thing. That's a good that thing. That is a very good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know, you know, we'd love to, we'd love to be inside that shop right now so that we could see everything, but you're going to bring some things out to show us. So, yeah. you know, I know I wanted to ask you some, like a little bit about your fabrics and okay. how, what, you know, what do you have there as far as fabric? So uh, fabric, um, uh, um, I guess is, you know, one of the funnest components of, of owning a quilt store. However, believe it or not, and I don't know if people <laughs> will believe this, um, that's my puppy dog. I hear Josephine. I hear Josephine in the background. <laughs> and somebody uh, got out of their car, so she's just letting me know <laughs> that they're there. She wanted but, to join the live show. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but anyway, it's actually become very, very hard to select a uh, fabric because, um, you know, I don't know how much I can pan around here, but we've got quite a few bolts. We've, we've grown quite a bit. When Actually, when I purchased the store, there was, uh, 
I want to say only a couple hundred volts. So well, I've always wondered about that. So I'm glad you're talking about it. I've always wondered, like, how do you how does a quilt shop owner select fabrics? You know, do you do you think do you have customers in mind when you pick things and you know, you know, you kind of you kind of like know your area or you know that there aren't any other shops close by that have a certain, you know, certain flavor and and how does that all how does that all work? You pick what you like. You have to think yeah. outside the box on that one, I'm sure. You're, you're putting a lot more um, uh, um, kudos on me than I deserve for picking fabric because <laughs> we, we do pick what we like. <laughs> um, I try to get a smattering of other things in there. And uh, Lori usually helps me pick out fabric. So it's nice. We kind of tag team about it. She kind of keeps me in check so I don't get too much because, of course, it can become overwhelming if you've got so much fabric um, that you, you, you stop even seeing it. So we have to be very selective because we've got a very limited space here. Um, I do tend to go towards uh, jewel tones and bright colors and everything. And I happen to love batiks quite a bit. But um, then between Lori and I both, although she has very similar tastes to me too, uh, we, we kind of feed off each other and like, okay, all right, let's go outside our comfort zone just a little bit and, and uh, try this. Uh, but pretty much uh, uh, when a fabric rep comes in, we look at everything that they have. So we make them go through everything that they have. And as we're looking at it, we're like, wow, wow, wow. And by the end of it, we're like, okay, we can't get all that. <laughs> so then we go back and start weeding out. So it, it is a time consuming process. Okay. Okay. But, uh, it, 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 you know, I, I tease, it is fun because it's fun to see how creative all these fabric artists are out there. Well, and I'm going to, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Cause I, I, I actually meant to mention before you do, you know, we're talking about teaching and we're going to talk more about you know, classes and all that. And I will absolutely have all the links to everything. If anyone wants to find you, you know, you have an online shop, um, they can find you if they're, I know we got snowbirds probably in the audience that travel down there. I actually know um, a, a lady who, who, as soon as I said Melbourne, Florida, she goes, oh yeah, yeah, I've been there lots of times. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll have all that information in the, in the show notes. So I'll make sure we have a, a links to all that. And I'm also going to be doing a blog post on my Let's Go Sew webpage um, over the weekend. And I'll have all the links. And if anybody has any questions that we didn't get to to ask Beth during the show, we'll make sure we get those, those Thank answered you, too. But um, you do a Facebook live show every single day, every yeah. single day. <laughs> and I know sometimes you give a tour of different fabric lines so people can see you're showing different, um, some new stuff coming in. Yeah. Different, uh, you know, uh, tools, tools, yeah. and then oh, you give and techniques and, and tricks. So I encourage everybody to catch your show. It's usually it's on the quilts and lace, uh, Facebook page. If you're right. on Facebook there and it is five 30 ish, five 30 ish. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we do close at five, but, uh, sometimes people trickle in or sometimes they don't leave, you know, right at five o'clock. So of course we, uh, we have the customers come first and, one night we had a delivery. So we actually, that's what we put on Facebook. We I saw it. that. It was actually fun. It was fun to watch. That definitely. Fun. And then, like you said, you have your YouTube page where there are uh, lots of great tips there. Great tips. Um, yes. Ira's done a lot of those. He has. And, um, yes. A lot of, uh, I did, uh, uh, if you go to our website, I did, I have a list of all our classes. And of course, something we haven't mentioned, so we do need to mention is, you know, I said my first sewing machine was a Bernina. However, I do use the Brother Luminaire now. <laughs> so, well, you are a brother dealer. I know yep, you're brother uh, and a brother body. dealer. And yeah. yep, which, um, so lots of, lots of similarities there. So nice and easy to use. While we're on the subject of classes, let's talk about some of your, you know, some of the classes that you have there. And um, I know you do some on, online as well, so we could talk about that. But I'm going to I'm going to ask you just a little bit, maybe kind of in the beginner mode. I'd love to see in the chat um, how many of our um, friends that are here tonight would call themselves beginners. I'd like to know if they would consider themselves maybe yeah. a beginner plus or intermediate or even advanced. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what everybody's interest is there, but I'd like to see everybody and I, kind of I, share I'd that. I'd like to hear what they did for their first quilt. My first quilt was uh, a, a rail. So the, the rail block. So 
Uh -huh. I'd like to hear what other people did as their first. Yeah, I was going to ask you what your what your first quilt yeah, was. I'm looking for ideas. So we do do a beginner quilt class. And um, uh, do you want me to expand? Yeah, on that? Tell, tell, tell a little bit about your about the classes. And then we want to see some samples. OK, all so right. I think you've got samples from from classes that we're going to get to see. Right. I do. So I will start with our upcoming beginner quilt class. And this one, I bet it's going to look even prettier far away. So this is our next quilt class coming up. I am not going to be teaching this one. Can you see it? Yeah. And then let us know, Beth, which ones of, of what you're showing us um, will be online. Okay. Uh, so this one, um, she did actually say she would do it virtually too. So what we're doing um, to try to stay very safe is that we are allowing eight students in the classroom. So you must wear a mask and we do keep you six feet apart, but then we offer it virtually too. So we have our, uh, we just invite you to a Zoom meeting. We have the camera going and we put the participants up on the screen and they can shout out if they need help and everything. I haven't done it on the beginner quilt class yet, uh, but that doesn't mean we can't. Uh, this one here is taken from the Fabric Cafe Quilts in a Jiffy. So I'm sure some people have probably done this one right here. Uh -huh. so, uh, it just takes three yards of fabric, uh, three different colors, one yard of each. So uh, this is actually three different fabrics. Uh, two of them look uh, pretty similar. This and this is actually two different fa fabrics from the same fabric line, but. And I'm, I'm checking the chat. We've got um, Marilyn here. She says she can walk to quilts and lace. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Margaret says she's an intermediate. Jennifer's a total beginner. Uh, okay. Tamara, um, she made her first quilt last week. It was a uh, uneven, uneven nine. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what she means, but she added two borders to that. We've got someone who, uh, Jane did an Amish quilt. Um, Arnell oh. did a baby quilt. Nice. Um, Hobbit did uh, a quilt called Hugs and Kisses. Oh, that sounds cute. And Sheila is an advanced quilter. Um, a four patch wall quilt was her first quilt. Oh, and Paula patch. never made a quilt. Uh, so that's that's great. She's going to get a, get to get a taste of this a little bit today. Uh, so some of the things I did have um, on the wall far, far away, so uh, it was too hard to get to, but uh, a very um, popular uh, first quilt that I like to do is an Eleanor Burns uh, Quilt in a Day Log Cabin. Uh, I highly recommend this. Uh, if, if you've never done this, even if you're an advanced quilter, I recommend it. It changed entirely uh, how I pieced because she, uh, Eleanor Burns is all about what is the most efficient, fastest way to get a quilt top done. And so you learn techniques in here that you can um, carry on to any quilt that you do. So uh, I agree like, that quilt in a day, um, log cabin quilt and the snowball quilt are, yeah. are two of my absolute favorites. I've used both of them because they're, you know, something that anybody could do even by yourself so if yeah. you just get the books and you want to um, self-study you can you can do that you don't need a lot of special tools no um and and they're very foolproof very 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 foolproof. they are good uh another one that i do like a lot um i've done several times i've done this as my uh, beginner quilt class this is uh alex anderson um and so what it does is it has several different types of blocks in here and quilts that you can do but what i like about it is it also gives some terminology so that you can have you know you got to know a lot of words when you first start to quilt oh that's and, a good uh, thing one of them we talked about the other day is that i am not a quilter <laughs> i know i said i i i don't even remember like how that particularly came up but i was like okay tell me something about you know, blah, blah, as you as a quilter. And you said, I'm not a quilter. And I was like, okay, I know there's more to this story. So tell me, tell me. Yeah. I, and then we could try to figure out how, what everybody here would define as a quilter that I would wonder. <laughs> that would be good because um, 
Uh, I so admire quilters. So that's why I'm like, okay, I am not a quilter. We have uh, excellent teachers here though that are. So I think I mentioned to you one of them. Um, so what I see the word quilter as being is when you've got your top, your piece top completely done and you put some batting in the middle and then you have your back layer and you're quilting all the three layers together. So you're sewing them all together. That's how I see quilting. Okay. And one of the classes that we have coming up, we will be doing it virtually also, is using that wonderful projection grid, uh, the guidelines, the grid lines on the, on the Luminaire. So okay. um, quilting class using that. And then Laurel, she's an excellent free motion. And she's got a Luminaire too, by the way. And so uh, she does a lot of her quilting right on just that regular sewing machine, although she does have a long arm too. Well, I think that's the other really interesting thing. And again, I'd love to see everybody chime in and say what, what they like to do. But, um, you know, so, we're, so we've got, so I've got to call you now a patchworker. Is that correct? A piecer. A piecer. Okay. A piecer, a piecer that makes patchwork. <laughs> Would that be correct? <laughs> so um, I do um, quilt tops. Actually, I'll show you the one that I just finished. Let me go get it. So you enjoy the process of... Yeah. Picking out the fabric, finding a pattern that, or finding whatever, cut, which came first, the chicken or the egg, finding a pattern, <laughs> finding the fabric, cutting the pieces, yeah. sewing them back together, and creating a pieced patchwork top. So I'm showing the backside of the quilt. So you can see that this is uh, the piecing. So this is the pieced top. So this is the quilt top it's not a quilt yet and I like uh, I like preparing the fabric um, I, I like cutting it I like just being precise and cutting it and then just the satisfaction of it all fitting together so um, and I like it when my um, points don't get um, knocked off when I'm sewing the okay. line. So I'm very <laughs> pleased with myself when I don't do that very pretty uh, points. Very pretty points. <laughs> Admire the points, please. <laughs> um, and I tell you, the thing that has made that so much easier to do is, again, uh, the guideline or the uh, laser light um, uh, on the machines so yeah. that I can yep. know right where that needle's going to go so I don't go over my points. We do. So, we have machines these days where, where there's literally a laser light built in that shines a beam of light that is colored. It could be on some machines, it's, it's, it's red. On other machines, it's green or white or red. And you have the option of, of choosing. And that line can be in direct line with your needle, or it can be off to the right, off to the left. And then, of course, um, there are some machines that have the ability to shine an entire grid of lines. Um, some do one line, some do multiple lines. It all depends on the, on the machine model that you have, but that yeah. can, it's, it can take the place of, of marking with chalk and huge, huge. all that type of thing. That's you know, so. It's yeah. huge. So yeah. uh, I do end up showing that frequently on Facebook because I just, it's just a feature that I think is awesome. So I, I like showing that. Well, and it's the kind of thing that, that, and it's been added into more, you know, more different models, but it's the kind of thing that unless you really see it in action, um, you don't really know, like, why would I, why would I care about this? But once you see what it can do for you, like piecing half square triangles, then you know that it's, it's something that you might be interested in, in looking for when you, when you are actually upgrading a machine or purchasing a machine. So yeah, definitely. Um, I did bring, I, uh, so I have some samples of some of my favorite quilt patterns, um, but I also did bring some tools that I think beginner quilters um, would appreciate. You want me yeah, to- Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see those tools. And then the other thing I'd kind of, so you go ahead and gather those up. The other thing I'd kind of like to talk about a little bit is when we talk about quilting, cause you said you're not a quilter now. So I gotta go, I gotta go along that line. You're not a quilter. So when, when we talk about every piece of patchwork has to be finalized by quilting. And I'd like to just talk a little bit about um, how that, what, what some of the options are. So let's say somebody hasn't, you know, maybe they're interested in making their first quilt and they're trying to think ahead of the game. Like, okay, they're, they're already, you know, interested in doing the patchwork, but what am I going to do when this top is done and it's time to actually 
quilt it? What are some of the options if you wanted to do it yourself or options that people can find to have somebody else actually finish it? When I teach my beginner quilt class, uh, the final class in it, and I usually do uh, uh, three, four or five sessions, depending on what kind of um, how much time I have and what kind of quilt top that they're making. But I do make sure to include uh, how to quilt it. Um, I think back to my very first quilt that I made when the um, uh, corners did not match up and they were a little off um, uh, what I was taught. So I always tell, hey, this is a great way to get something quilted and hide any mistakes you have is by just using a decorative stitch. So wow. uh, just using a decorative stitch to go right over the center of your seams and it hides um, a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, that's a good tip. That's a good, so like a, maybe like a serpentine stitch or. Serpentine or the feather, the little feather, feather stitch. stitch. Yeah. Okay. Feather. Okay. Feather. And good. Uh, what you foot, decorative, but. what foot would you use when you, when you were doing so, that? Um, at that time, this has been many years ago. I actually ended up uh, just using uh, my regular standard foot that came with the machine. Okay. Uh, um, I did want to share with you, of course, uh, brother came out with the uh, dynamic walking foot and this dynamic walking foot, it, it can't go forward and it can't go sideways. I mean, it can go forward, but it can't go, um, uh, it, it, it can do more decorative stitches because you can go up. I think it's a seven millimeter stitch that you right. can do. Right. Exactly. Uh, so it exactly. can go back. So um, that's what's kind of fun about this foot is that you can do a little bit more variety of decorative stitches with this walking foot. And walking foot, um, of course, they come with many of our quilting. Hold it up just a teeny bit higher, just a little bit higher. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good. It's yeah. still have a package, so you can't really see it, but he's kind of a. a I can see it. Foot. It's pretty good. Yeah, and he comes with uh, two uh, soles on him too. So he comes with an open toe one, so you can really see what you're doing, or the standard sole on it. Yeah. To my knowledge, that is the first actual walking foot that I have ever seen that will do decorative stitching. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Of course, we have the move it foot available on other machines too, the, the um, digital dual feed foot, and that will do decorative stitches too. But there, this one, this, this foot works on, on yes. lots and lots of machines. Yes. I have a whole blog post on that on my Let's Go Sew webpage. Oh, so yes, that's right. You can that's look that up. We did talk about that one. So anyway, uh, an excellent uh, foot that they that they introduced. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I like to do is just tell people to use um, uh, just draw a straight line. So if you want to do a quilt pattern, that's uh, uh, just a, a grid work type of thing or a diamond kind of thing, you can do a um, use your walking foot, just use a straight stitch and use a quilt guide and the quilt guide attaches to the foot. And so after you do that first straight line somewhere down the center of your quilt, this quilt guide then can line you up for subsequent um, parallel lines to that first one. Yeah. And so it looks really professional. You don't have to draw a bunch of lines and you can get uh, very good uh, results with that. You so. can be really, really consistent with yeah. that. And you know, another little little trick that I'll throw in, um, if you're doing something that's not too big, you know, if you're doing something that maybe wall hanging size or a pillow or something like that, I like to use uh, low tack tape to mark my first diagonal line. Okay. And that way I don't have to mark a line at all. And I just so right next to so that my needle is going right alongside the edge of the tape. Excellent. And then I take the tape off and use that quilting guide that you put in the back of the foot and do every other line nice. with with the guide. And then you have no markings whatsoever to remove on oh, your nice. on your quilt when you're done. So yeah, that yeah. works. It definitely works. You just want to get the tape off, you know, right away. You never want to leave tape on fabric for very long. It's always just a real, real temporary thing, but that, that definitely works. So those are some of the basic ones that I usually do. And then the other thing is that I just really encourage them to, if quilting isn't something you enjoy, you know, like I said, that's not my favorite thing to do, but make sure you do the first one at least so that you can admire and realize how much work it is uh, when somebody else does it. So uh, just, just do it. And, definitely. Um, I think it's completely legitimate to uh, quilt by check. So. Yep, yep, <laughs> check or credit card, right? Yeah. <laughs> and let's explain what we mean by that. That was when you take your finished pieced patchwork 
Yes. Your top that's finished and you've got your borders on everything. Now, do I understand that when you do that, you know, okay, let's say, let me, let me finish the line of thought here. You, you take that, that completed piece that just, but it hasn't been quilted yet. And you take it to somebody who has an actual long arm quilting machine. Correct. They can put the entire quilt on there. It's stretched nice and smooth and taut. Your top is there, your batting, your backing. And then they do all of the quilting. Sometimes it's custom. Sometimes it's an all over Correct. pattern, basically like an, like an edge to edge type of, of, yeah. you know, finishing. But I've always kind of wondered because I've never actually, actually done that. Maybe I have some friends here that, that are wondering the same thing. Do you have to leave extra margin for them to, very, to do that? You do. So very good point. Um, and they don't want you uh, uh, pinning the layers together, basting them together, nothing. They just want to have your press top. So they do want your quilt top to be nicely pressed. Make sure to clip any loose threads because otherwise, um, if they don't take the time to take those threads out, once they quilt it in there, it's very hard to, to pull them out once it's quilted in. So make sure that so it's- clean uh, it up. Clean yeah, it up clean basically. It up right. And then uh, some ask for batting, some say they'll provide uh, batting. Um, okay. And then for the backing, what I am usually told is to leave a three to four inches. Uh, because again, when they put it on the machine, they actually put the backing on first and then they float the, the batting. And the okay, so you want three to four inches extra all the way around your right. quilt top. That's right. So uh, you want to bring a piece, you want a piece of a, a backing if you're not using, I know there is those wide backings that you can yep. buy, but. Otherwise, you would piece it so that it's a, it has a an extra border all the way around, so it'll extend outside of your your piece top. Your piece top. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. And then, obviously, when they're done with the quilting, then you would take that quilt home, you would trim it all up, and then you would add your your final Correct. binding. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, speaking of quilting, uh, another way that's very popular is to use your embroidery machine. So yes, uh, definitely. Big hoops that we have nowadays, you can do edge to edge quilting. And one of the classes that we have online is we have an online uh, um, edging class. And this uses the Emily Scott uh, booklets. Uh huh. Uh, anyway, that we do have listed online. And um, I don't know if you can see because there is a lot of pattern to this, but if people can see the quilting, but this is a-, a um, How about if you flip it to the back? Maybe we could see it from well, the back side. the back is even more busy. Busy, okay. <laughs> well, and actually though, let's talk about that because that's a really good tip. If you're doing, let's say you're doing the quilting yourself and you know, I totally understand that. Some of us want to do the entire thing from start to finish. Yeah. And, and where there's a will, there's a way, whether you want to try stipple quilting, free motion quilting, grid quilting, like we talked about, um, however you want to do it. If you want to do it from start to finish, you can. And if you want to be a little more forgiving on yourself, pick a busy background. So <laughs> whatever you pick for the back, pick something that's busy. So you're not going to be, you know, looking at anything that's uneven and, you know, picking it yourself because that may not be, be, yeah. um, you know, absolutely perfect on the back because you got to start somewhere. Back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and match the thread to your back. Right. Right. That's a uh, good tip. Right in. But well, anyway, that's probably been our most popular online class. And our biggest request nowadays for classes is uh, either free motion quilting, ruler work, free motion quilting. That's uh, another way to quilt. Yeah. That's another way to do uh, it. Well, I think what's what's fun about the edge to edge quilting is that it's it's really something that anybody can do on on any embroidery machine. It is an you're actually using an embroidery design, right. and I know there are designs um, for that for that edge edge to edge quilting that are even in the four by four hoop range. So if somebody has a starter machine, they can still do. It. It's just going to take more hoopings to get across yeah. and down your your um, your quilt, exactly. but yeah. Now the ones that we have uh, six by 10 is actually the smallest hoop size that she does. So this is that Emily Scott designs. And if you look on the back, each uh, package that you buy, I, she's either a number 14 or 15 now. I don't know if you can see that number on there, but then she includes several designs in there. 
Yeah, I know she's catered to that um, a little bit uh, larger, but just for everybody that's out there, if you're interested in it and you take that class and you learn the basic principles, even if you don't have a six by 10 hoop, you can still find quilt patterns out there online. I'm actually, I'm actually taking that class right now myself online. And so I'll be sharing um, some little twists on that with some of my, some of my people that, um, so they can look, they can look forward to that. Perfect. And of course, on some of the larger machines here, we do have fill patterns that now the new feature that they have of it is so that it doesn't look so much like an embroidery with a triple stitch, you can actually tell the machine, hey, just make it a single stitch and it looks more like a quilting than an embroidery on top of the quilt. So yeah, yeah, there's just so many options there. Were, I mean, uh, you could fill a book just with possibilities, definitely possibilities. So yes. yes. So um, do you want me to grab the tools? That yeah, let's talk. Let's talk tools for sure. Let's talk tools. So the walking foot, of course, was one of them. Um, and uh, I'm sure that all machines come with a standard foot. So I do like the standard foot a lot. And in the brother and baby lock machines, you can easily put the needle so that it's a quarter inch uh, from the right side of your foot. So in quilting or piecing, I should say, catch myself there, um, you do quarter inch seam allowances. So you have to learn how to get that quarter inch. So um, there are all kinds of tools, tricks, methods, everything to do that. And having that needle in the right position is a, a very easy way to do it. But something I know very popular for everybody is to just use a quarter inch foot. Now this is the baby lock uh, version of it. And I know, you know, from having worked in a, in a sewing store myself, um, virtually every machine that came in, old, new, and everything in between, we could find a quarter inch foot for them, or we could find a way for their machine to stitch an accurate quarter inch. So, um, this you know. one has a guide. So I do like it with the guide. I don't know if you can see that yep. black yep. Uh, rudder kind of there, I kind of call it. And so it actually uh, prevents you from pushing that fabric uh, any further to the right so that, uh, you know, you, you lose your quarter inch. I have a friend who, my friend Jan um, was teaching her granddaughter how to, how to quilt and she was using the foot, the quarter inch foot with a guide. And she said, it's like a fence that, you know, put your fabric up against the fence and you don't want to go beyond the fence when you're stitching that seam. So I thought it was a good way of putting that's it. That's good. And in fact, that's one of the biggest things uh, in the beginner quilt class that we do. We, uh, no matter what kind of machine you have, of course, all of them are welcome. And we just uh, figure out the best way for you to get that quarter inch, be it a little tape on your sewing machine or uh, some type of uh, tool, or of course a foot. Yeah, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. And if you have, if you do have a computerized machine and you have a standard, you know, if you've got, uh, you know, a brother computerized machine in particular is what I'm going to speak to. And you have the standard foot on your, which is your J foot. If you set your stitch width, which is the position of your needle at 5.5 and run your fabric along the edge of the foot, you will get a consistent quarter inch. Perfect. Yep. And that's what I mostly do. So I do enjoy that. Although I do like the quarter inch. And then the other tool that's very important is uh, preparing your fabric. So this is what I did the, on Facebook a few nights ago is talked about preparing your fabric uh, before you even cut it. Because if that fabric uh, has wrinkles in it, um, is not laying flat toward uh, on the grain, uh, it'll make it very difficult for you to get perfect seams and line them up and everything. So exactly uh, uh, the Ellen uh, um, Best Press or Mary Ellen, I should say Best Press. Um, I do like this product a lot. And then I did use my scan and cut machine to label ah, it so cute. and I uh, filled it with the Best Press. And what this does is you use less product and it makes a nice fine mist so that I can spray my fabric with it and it adds just a little umph and a little stiffness to it so that it's much easier to cut the fabric. Right, right. That, um, especially if you wash your fabric. So are you, uh, uh, you know, if you wash your fabric, you wash all that sizing that was in there when you bought it out, yep. but you know what your fabric's going to look like once it's washed. So yep. we probably have washers and non-washers on here. I'd like to see in the chat. Who, whether you're quilting yeah, I, or I sewing, like, 
that who too. washes your fab who out there washes your fabric and who doesn't wash the fabric um i know you had an example recently where you had yeah, someone who I made a quilt i do have it right here so let's talk about that a little bit why would you wash your fabric before you quilt with it and why wouldn't you wash it let's talk about those two things yeah, so this is a quilt. Um, actually, this is a free motion quilted, by the way. So all those little stitches yeah, were all Yeah, it's wonderfully done. Uh, by Laurel. Um, I don't know if you can see where the red bled a little bit into the white there. Not sure no, we really can't see it from here. I don't think that that much, but but that's but, because the red, red fabrics yeah. tend to not hold their dye as well as other colors. So uh, what I have been taught on that, if you wash one piece of the quilt, just make sure you wash all the other fabrics in the quilt. So just be consistent in whatever you're doing. Um, now, she did tell me that that red fabric was older. So they have, uh, they're much, much better at color fastness now. So in newer fabrics, they're much more color fast. Oh, that's good to know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought about that from fabric that's been stashed for a while as yes, opposed to, to brand that. new safe side you know if you are using a red or black on white or purple purple would be probably another one uh you might want to think about washing it um i'm not a washer so if i if i don't have to i don't um but uh i will if if, if i know i'm gonna have these dark colors next to white fabric i'm just looking over here at the chat arnell is a washer and jane is a washer and margaret washes sometimes and other times she doesn't wash so it all depends on what you're making too some yeah. things i guess that you're going to put into a wall hanging might never need to get laundered you might just vacuum it to dust it you know or something every every now and then so and of course pre-cuts uh that would be very difficult to wash so anything that is a fabric that's already cut into little pieces or the two and a half inch strips i have heard of people doing it but you're probably going to have a lot of shredding yeah i've always heard that that was not when that that was not a good idea and jane actually is telling us that she used uh, best press and her fabric bled um even though it was washed Wow. So that wow. tells you that that piece of fabric had a lot more dye to release. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope she didn't get too far in that project. That would be very sad. I hope that was before all the cutting and piecing and everything. Yeah. And then uh, we got something to do, but I would say I do both too, but I, I tend to pre-wash things. But again, you know, coming from the garment side of sewing, you're just always used to doing that. And so I kind of, you know, but then I usually, I usually spray it with the, the best press and um, just give it a little bit more, just a little bit more body before I work with it. That makes a difference. It definitely makes a difference. Makes it act more like paper uh, and just makes it easier. And to go along then with that cutting is, um, of course we sell um, the Olaf products, which are very good. I mean, there's a lot of good products over there, but right now my favorite uh, has been the Quilter Select. So this is uh, the mat that they have. Uh, it's got a dark side when you're working with light fabrics and then a light side when you're working with dark fabric. Oh, okay. So that's a self-healing self rotary cutter mat. Correct. And okay. it's nice and thick. So it's a really heavy mat and self-healing. So um, I do like that a lot. And then for the rotary cutter, I either use hers, which is a nice heavy one. So it's supposed to be very ergonomic so that you don't strain your hand. But I do like the retac retractable rotary cutters. Uh, because, of course, working here, we hear a lot of stories and we have had stories of uh, blood. <laughs> you know, the rotary cutter fell. They hadn't retracted the blade and they cut their toes and they cut their fingers. Yeah, those like are not. One that uh, it, it is uh, as soon as you release the hand uh, lever on it, the blade is uh, retracted. So I like. Yeah, it's a you, you got to be really um, you have to form a perfect habit with a rotary cutter that, you know, if yours doesn't have a safety feature built in to make sure that, but I think it's, it's also nice to know that there are so many different rotary cutters. So everybody kind of has a different comfort level and whatever you, you know, try, try different ones and see, yeah, see what works for you. Definitely, definitely. But rotary cutting is the way to go, isn't it? It's hard to believe that we ever did all that with, with scissors. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. So are there rulers to go with that? 
Yes, there are. And uh, what makes them unique, so these are the quilter select rulers. I just have the little one that, of course, any new quilter should get the six and a half by 24 inch ruler. So that is a must have. And the reason for that is a bolt of fabric is about 22 inches when you cut the fabric off of a bolt. Okay, so that makes perfect sense. Over. So you have enough extra rule, extra, yeah. extra ruler to extend over. Yeah. And then obviously your mat is bigger than your, than your ruler. So, Perfect. yeah. So the biggest mat you can get, I highly recommend, but don't make it any smaller than at least one dimension being 24 inches. So do make sure that, yeah. So that again, it will hold that fold of fabric off the bolt. And I, you know, I have a, I have a friend, her name is Joanne as well. Maybe she's, maybe she's on here tonight. I don't know, but she uh, raves about those quilter select rulers because they tend to stick to the fabric. Yeah. Is that correct? They have that like a special so non-skid built into the bottom yeah. side of the ruler. Um, uh, other rulers have a grippiness to them, but I have not seen it compared to the Quilter Select. Um, so this one, it's kind of got a yellow coating to it. And um, it's uh, just, oh my gosh, I can rotate fabric all the way around the, the mat and keep that ruler in the same place. So it's wonderful because when I cut, I'm a right-hander. And so I have to make my straight cut, you know, on the right-hand side. And then I can either walk around the table or flip my fabric, which could get it out of alignment. So by being able to just rotate the fabric right on the mat, and cut the other side is uh, is a great feature of the quilter select rulers. I see Dale here wrote in. She she had she had one disaster that she never wants to repeat. Her her fabric didn't get washed and it it caused an issue. So she uh, makes sure she washes everything. <laughs> now. Good job. Yeah. And <laughs> Teresa loves the rulers. Um, let's see. Sharon made a skirt in third grade. And um, she she's doing all kinds of sewing these days. So oh, that's that awesome. is that is good to hear. That is really good to hear. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, if we have some gentlemen on here, um, start feeding in your questions here. If, if Beth has piqued yeah. your uh, piqued your thoughts there and you've got some some questions to throw in because we we're going to just uh, be winding up here in not too, too long. So I want to make sure if we got any questions, we get them in. All here, right. So. Um, I have one more favorite tool for new quilters. Let's see it. And that is the cut right bind up tool. Okay. Now that one, I think you did a show on recently. Yeah. And I was really, really impressed by that. Tell us what, what, um, so and make it look up uh, the, and I'll, I'll provide a link to that okay. when I do the show notes, but yeah. what makes that so great? What does that do for you? So when you're putting binding on your quilt, let me get a quilt here. Here's some new fabric we have in, by the way, with moths. I guess moths are the new, uh, the new thing. The new critter, the new critter creature <laughs> that we're going to see everywhere. <laughs> But the binding, of course, is what's going to go on my edges all the way around. Well, it, you go fine, you know, all the way around. But what happens when you get back to your beginning point and you have these two flaps of binding that you have to, you know, have them go together? So what this binding tool is helps you precisely cut each end so that when you sew them together, they're just the perfect length to to fill in that spot that you uh, are ended up with on the end. So. Okay. That is always a challenge because you got to go continuously all the way around. So you have to begin and you have to end and where the beginning and the end come together, yep. it's always best to have them come together. Let's see if I can do this at a miter. <laughs> it's hard to do at a mitered angle right. instead yep. of just folded edge to edge. I mean, you can do that, yep. but it's funny how your eye is drawn to a hard line. And a soft line, which would be, you know, a diagonal seam just kind of blends in. So that really gives a more professional finish if you can do that. And it also makes it so that you don't have to worry about joining it at any of the corners. I know there's been times when I've tried to do like something with a ribbon trim and miter one of the, to miter one of the corners. I've got, got some tricks for that there. I know there's, you know, I've got a video out there oh, on that. To share that but you know that so that can be done obviously with a with a you know especially with a wider binding it's easier when it's wider that way 
but um, doing it on, you know, with that beautiful narrow binding and having it miter, you know, and joined at a corner seam is, is very, very difficult. So just, you know, doing it that way and having that diagonal. It's perfect. And it's a, a never fail. And it's a, you don't forget. So there's many tools out there. And then each time I would pull one of those out, I was like, okay, let me look at those instructions again. How am I putting this all together? This one, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. So it's uh, one of my favorite tools well, to make it easier. So you've shared so many great, you know, beginner. I mean, let's kind of recap just a little bit. If you're, um, if you are a new quilter, or even if you're a seasoned quilter, um, that log cabin book, and yep. like I said, I recommended the snowball one as well. Both yep. of those Eleanor Burns books are really good. You showed us some great rulers. You gave us some good tips on, um, you know, uh, different rotary cutters and being safe with the rotary cutter yeah. and the binding tool that you shared that yeah. one, you know, again, I'll, I'll make sure I link all that. Those things can all be purchased online from your, from your yeah. online store. Correct. Pretty so, much. Um, uh, not everything is up there. So feel free to give our store a call. Okay. Um, um, uh, have been challenging ourselves to get better online. We uh, did not even have an online store prior to last year. So we just started that very recently. It kind of became a necessity to, to go online. And so we've been trying different things and um, we uh, are getting better, so. <laughs> well, I think, you know, and I know you would agree because you've got your own local customers and they're always gonna come to you because they're they're there, they're local. and we. We all have maybe a good local shop, you know, if, if we have a good local shop, we have, you know, allegiance to them, but there are people that, that don't have that option. And it's, it's great to be able to, to have somebody, you know, like you that we can go to and, and call up and, you know, um, get some things that, that we need like that. So that's, that's good too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I did have um, two other things to show and it's my very favorite quilt to make and my very favorite quilt class to give. Okay, let's see it. All right, so this is my favorite quilt to make and this is the quilt without corners. So it's kind of like a Bargello quilt and I don't know if you guys can tell, I probably have to back up a lot more to see that it's a circle. Oh, that and that's your signature quilt. That is, that is part of your logo, it's beautiful. Yeah. And you're telling me that's easy? Oh, it's very easy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known that in a million years. That looks like so far advanced. I, 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 I would have never known that. Um, I do have to, I did have to pin in making this one and I, I do hate to pin, but, but uh, it's easy. Other than the pinning part, it's very easy. So, wow. And, and what is that called again? What is that actually called? Quilt Without Corners. Quilt Without Corners. And are there variations to it? Obviously there so, are. Yeah, so this uh, pattern that I, the quilt that I just showed you is from this book right here, but of course it has this butterfly one. So this wow. book has been out for a very long time. If you look at the back of the book, you can see just beautiful variations of it. And so you oh my, it. those would be great uh, table toppers. Yeah, you can make them in different sizes. And trees, yeah. Oh, they're great trees, trees. yeah, definitely. Wow. That's my favorite one to make. And my favorite one to teach is the One Block Wonder. So this one's a very big quilt. And I don't know if somebody out there can recognize what kind of fabric I used to make it. Not me. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's pretty. Somebody will recognize that fabric. Anybody recognizing what that fabric is? Go a little slower and hold it still for a minute. It looks like it had some animals on it, it like does. zebras and leopards. I could see the parrots now. So is that kind of like a stack and whack style? Uh, yeah, very simil similar, similar. Uh, okay. A little bit more um, precise. Is anybody recognizing who the fabric is by? I don't see anybody recognize it. Doris says it doesn't look easy either. So thank you, Doris, for agreeing with me. But we'll, we'll trust Beth on that one. June loves it. She thinks it's gorgeous. Arnell loves it. Teresa loves it. 
So it's made with one fabric. So it's all one fabric. And this was a Laurel Birch fabric. So very mm -hmm. old. Uh, this was, I did this one quite a while back. I've got one in progress actually right now using a panel and everybody's waiting for me to get it done so that I can do a, a follow-up uh, Facebook on how to sew it together. So wow. it's actually very easy too. Um, I did make sure that after I pieced it all that I took a picture of the back of the piece top because I had to press all the seams open. And that's a lot of work. <laughs> oh, that takes more, a little more time. So let me ask you a question on that. Does, when you do that, does that mean you have to have, um, every panel has to be exactly the same? So you have a, a printed fabric where the panel is exactly identical and then you, you layer it together? Correct. And you pin through all the six layers. Okay. So, um, I, so you had asked earlier about what kind of fabric I look for. So I actually constantly look for a, a fabric that would make a very good one block wonder. And the reason why I like to make it as a class is because it is, um, it does take you a long time to, to make uh, this quilt, <laughs> but um, it's, it's a kaleidoscope, you know, just like your stacking yeah. Fabric. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it is, a kaleidoscope. Every piece you put together looks different. So it's just so exciting to see uh, what piece is next, you know, what it's going to look like when you put your six uh, uh, triangles together and sew them together. So it's all straight lines. There's no Y seams, nothing like this. This is all straight lines. So, uh, And I'm, I'm, check, I'm checking the questions here and um, just to back up for a minute so they, because they, they'll get away from me if I don't ask them now, they'll yeah. be disappear. Um, Juanita wanted to know what was the tool called? And I, and I believe she was talking about the binder tool. Oh, so what okay. was the exact name on that? So it's the cut right bind up tool. Cut right bind up tool. Uh -huh. Juanita, right. there you go. And then um, Sharon wanted to know, are the six by 10 quilting designs for machines other than a long arm? So mm, Sharon, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking about, but I'm thinking that you're talking about when we showed the uh, the edge to edge, those are for an embroidery machine. Yeah, we didn't even talk about designs that were made for a long arm, and that's a whole different. These yeah. are designed for machines that do hoop embroidery, and those particular ones we were talking about were six by ten. So hopefully yeah. that answers your and larger your question on that. Yeah, for jumbo hoops too. So she does have some pattern packets that say jumbo size. Yes, there definitely are um, larger ones. And like I said, I know online you can find some smaller ones as, as well. So that is, that is possible. Um, uh, Jane says, can't wait for the panel one. How many panels do you need? Six. Six. Uh, six, uh-huh, because um, I'm making a hexagon. So I need six sections of the exact same piece of fabric. Okay, and then what size quilt does that finish out at? So I like to look for fabric that has a 24 inch repeat. And that one that I showed you there, I, I wanna say he's a good 80, 80 by something. Now I do have borders on it, but it'll make, if you get a 24 inch repeat fabric, it'll make a very good size quilt. The panel that I'm using is much smaller. So it's still going to be pretty good size, but it will be uh, more like a wall hanging, you know, a large wall hanging. Okay. And again, is that one that you have as an online class? No. Uh, so that one coming uh, in the future, maybe. I, I wonder if I could, I, I've been doing it on my Facebook live. So no reason I couldn't do it virtually. Yeah. So I, I did it as a Facebook live. I do need um, Anne's help when I do that because I need both my hands, but sure, <laughs> sure. As I'm cutting it. Wow. But, uh, yeah. That, and in that, fact, I had brought it, but I put it far, far away, Joanne. So I forgot to bring it forward. That's okay. Did, did we miss any of your samples there? Um, I think you uh, saw all the ones. The only other thing that I brought out is that uh, we do try to do some charity things here too. Um, like I said, our quilter um, customers are so wonderful and great and giving. And, and so the new project that we're going to be doing next is to make these little pillows. Scooch that in just a little bit closer to your face so that we like a little bit more where your head is so we can see the full piece. Yeah. Yeah. Those are so adorable. And so the sloth is really cute. And I know the first thing I'm going to ask, and I bet you there are going to be other people asking here, 
Are there patterns available for those? Uh, there's not, but we're, we're in the throes of making one. So our instructor for this is making it. And of course, we want to use our scanning cut. Machine. I was going to say that would be perfect to cut the, yeah, the pieces. Oh, my. That is just And this is a local cute. group that we're uh, going to be donating these to. Um, we also donate pillowcases, which is a great, you know, sewing project for a new person sewing. Well, hopefully once you get going on that, you can share the information with oh, me and then I can pass it along because well, we may have people great. that have groups here that they'd yeah. like to do the same type of thing in, in their area. Um, I'm all about, you know, any kind of sewing that we can do to help others, because that's one of the great things about the sewing community. We always, we always come together and try to do something that's going to, you know, our, our stitches are going to help hold somebody else's <laughs> life together and make things better for us. Our customers made, I mean, they made a ton of masks for uh, the uh, healthcare people here. So that was- And I remember you did the bags, you did the, the those bags that you yes. did. Cross yeah. Bags. yeah. Yeah. There's just so much, and you know, there's quilts of valor people, yes, you know, did. work on. There's just so many, so many different things. So- sure. Yeah, just check in, check in the chat here, see if there's any other yeah, uh, burning questions. So if you got any any questions, you want to get them in because we're getting getting close to, to finishing up. So speaking of finishing up, and we could go on and uh, we got to do another one. I could see you coming on. I think it would be fun maybe to um, have you show, we do a shorter, a shorter show and have you show how to finish quilts um oh, you know binding that. maybe give yeah. us some tips on binding oh, and maybe some other ways to finish the edges i know you talked about lots of different things at one time on how you can you do different edgings oh, on yeah. your quilt yeah. so that might be fun you could show show some samples oh, and some that'd processes be, that'd be that. great like i said but, i love to teach so if anybody's willing to listen and you're a great teacher and so that's always good to have a plan for the future that would be something fun to do yeah. but when i think of finishing a quilt all right. So we've already talked about, you know, the piecing uh, from picking the fabrics to cutting it to piecing to getting it quilted somehow, whether you do it yourself or have somebody else do that, do that part for you. But I don't know about you. I think you're going to agree with me. The final icing on the cake oh. is the label. Am I right? You're right. And I'm, I'm one of those that, you know, do as I say, not only, not always do I do it, but I chastise my own self when I, maybe I'm in a hurry to get something finished and I don't, you know, I don't make a label for it, but I think we should label even small things that we're making. Maybe you make a, a tote bag for somebody or, a, or a purse or a pillowcase, you know, you can make a label somehow, some way. That's another whole, another whole probably um, show, but for yeah. quilt, Absolutely. Do something. That was the label that we yeah. did for the, for the cruise quilt yeah. and, um, and with we the dates that on it machine. Yeah. and the name. So, you know, give us some tips on how to, uh, how, you know, what, what are some different ways you can finish your quilt off with a label? Yeah. So that's great. And labels are so important because I have some old quilts in my possession and there are no quilt labels on it. So you have no idea who it was made for, what pattern they used, when they used, um, you know, who made it. Uh, so none of the history on it. So it is uh, yeah. pretty much essential to uh, to put a label on something. So um, uh, you just want, you know, of course, the, the basic information. Uh, it could be the name of the pattern or maybe you created your own and wanted to call it. So I would say the essentials are uh, probably the date and, and who made it or who you made it for. So those are kind of the uh, essentials on a label. Although you can, of course, uh, they do poems. Uh, people get yeah. very- Yeah, I've seen some great, great things. Some great things on the back of quilts. <laughs> um, but, and then there's there's many ways that you could do it. If you have an embroidery machine, obviously you can program it into an embroidery machine. Um, many of our machines have built in lettering yeah. you know, in the character and, and decorative mode. I've got a, a blog post on that. If anybody wants to, wants to know where it's at, they can always get a hold of me and I can send them directly to it. But so that you can even use those, you know, just, just like you're sewing a zigzag stitch or a decorative stitch, but you can right. stitch out lettering and, you know, put that into rows and, and put a message 
and have everything all nice and lined up. The other way to do it is um, printable fabric yeah. where you can, um, you know, if you have an inkjet printer and you buy printable fabric, you can type it out and right. then print it right on the fabric and put that on. Um, you probably have seen, uh, yeah, you've probably ordered labels even for yeah. where you can, you know, they're buy it by the yard, just like yeah. you would fabric yeah. and then use um, a marker. I like to use the Pigma markers. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's, I don't even know why they're called Pigma, but that's, if you're, if you're looking for a marker that, that, you know, is going to, is going to make a nice fine line and is going to be permanent and, um, acid free. I think the Pigma markers fall into that, into that category, but definitely um, the tip, uh, that I had with that is that put, uh, some type of paper, uh, behind your fabric that has lines on it so that it helps you write in straight lines. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. That's a great tip. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Sandra's saying she, um, she thinks it's really fun to embroider the message right on the quilt itself instead yeah. of, um, you know, so not necessarily attaching on, on a separate label. Yeah. And you could even, I've seen people, you know, hide, kind of hide it. So not really hide it, but, you know, kind of put it yeah. in a place where you almost have to eye spy to yeah. try to, to try to find it. And there are yeah. no rules to labels. So, yep, you can do anything. Oh, and Jane, Jane says she never thought her quilts were good enough for labels. Oh. Jane, don't say it isn't so. <laughs> Everything you make with your own two hands is oh, something that is, yeah. that it's is finished. so precious. It's finished is precious. <laughs> and valuable. It's valuable to others. You know, I think a lot of us, we get, we're so used to being able to know how to sew we don't realize what the rest of the world out there cannot do. I mean, they cannot do it and we can. So that makes it special just in and, in and of itself. And I'm sure Jane, right, yours are that work to do. Put those labels on there. Definitely. Definitely. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll have links to um, the different things, but you can always, you, know, you can always reach me through my let's go. So.com website. If you have any questions whatsoever, I'm always there. To help but Beth how can everybody reach you because I know we're going to have people that are going to want more from you oh I hope so so um so again thank you Joanne for introducing me to all your friends I so love that um so uh my uh, website is just quiltsandlace.com so spell it all out uh q-u-i-l-t-s-a-n-d-l-a-c-e.com so you can just spell that out and go there our phone number is 321-622-8602. Um, okay, repeat that. Repeat the phone number, please. 321-622-8602. And I don't know if you know why we have a 321 uh, zip code. Do you know? Well, we live where they launch rockets. So that's how, um, I forgot who requested it. I don't know if Ann knows back there, but that's how we got three, two, one. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Fun trivia fact, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And then your Facebook page, you have yes, a Facebook uh, page? So, yep, please go there. So it's just Quilts and Lace is our Facebook, Facebook page. If you like us, you'll get a notification when we're going live. So if we're not at 5.30 and we're at Ish. 6 o'clock, <laughs> there. And then we also have a uh, private group. So you do have to ask to join. Uh, you just have to say that you like to sew and that you'll follow the rules. And that's where you can post your projects that you're doing. Uh, we have uh, Cherry, who's our Kimberbell expert. She actually does a little sew along. And Marilyn, the one that just lives uh, walking distance from us, she teaches some of our classes online. So she's got a couple classes online that you guys can sign up for. And uh, she also is doing the Nebula block of the month. So that's what she's helping uh, to kind of uh, uh, help people uh, go along that block of the month path. Um, Fun. And so that's called Quilts and Lace Sew Along, S-E-W Along. So. Okay. And then your YouTube channel, which is? YouTube. Yep. Uh, then that's just Quilts and Lace. Quilts and Lace. Go to okay. YouTube and type in Quilts and Lace. And uh, there's actually two things that will come up. Um, if you pick the Melbourne, Florida one that has Melbourne, Florida on the end of it, you'll actually get a tour of our store. That was a little promotion I did when Scott Fortunoff was uh, offering quilt stores could uh, give tours and everything. I remember when you did that. Yeah. 
and so but the other one then has all our classes so you can go to youtube or we also have them on our website so you can go to our website and uh it's got i think it's under video and you can go there and you can see a list of uh, the classes that are free and we got tons that are free and then of course we've got some of those that you pay for you do definitely you've got lots of great lots of great 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 information there for every for all kinds of sewing all kinds um, of machines uh sergers multi-needles sewing yeah, definitely. Well, Beth, this has just been so much fun visiting with you. Um, next best thing to next best thing to cruising. <laughs> so we've been on a cruise tonight with everybody cruising, cruising the quilting world and cruising the sewing yeah. world. So, we'll be so over soon, Joanne. Yeah. Oh, I want everybody to know that I will be posting um, a blog this weekend on let's go. So.com with uh, a link to the video and a uh, a little bit of a recap and all those important links so you can find it all there. And we will have another one of these great interview shows next month. So we're doing the So Tell Me live interview on the fourth Monday of every month. And between now and then, I wish you all a world full of pretty stitches. Oh, and stay safe, everybody. Thank Bye. you, Beth. Thank you, Joanne. Happy sewing.